100 Years, 100 Voices, a St. John Centennial Oral History Project conceived and produced by WSJS Radio, where every day is history. WSJS Radio, I'm Carlos Anartiz interviewing my mom, Marimar Perez Riera. So, when did you attend St. John's School? I graduated in 19... 19- 85, and I am what they call a survivor, which is I went all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade in high school to the same school, St. John's. What do you remember most about being a student here? I remember this was my second home. I remember the happiest moments and laughing all the time. Any unforgettable anecdotes or experiences you would like to share with us? I guess uh, what we call las paveras, never-ending laughing moments, not only with my peers and my great friends, but also with the teachers. I had a very interesting uh, math teacher. His name was uh, Chago, and Chago was blind, and he taught students who were advanced in mathematics. And I remember that I thought, well, he's blind, so he can't, you know, he can't see us. I may get away with something here and there. It was impossible. Chago knew exactly what we were doing, when we were doing, and he would call us on it. And so inevitably, we would have paveras and laugh, and he would too. I remember when we were in 11th grade, we were allowed to actually go out of the school to eat lunch elsewhere. And we would go, my friends, uh, Jenny and Maida and I, would go to Pizza Hut. It's quite a ways away. This one particular day, we were late. And I tried to get into the room without Chago noticing, because he couldn't see. And I thought I did. And he let me go in, and he let me sit down. And he even asked me a question, and I was flustered, and I looked for the answer. And then he very softly, but very slyly, mentions the fact that he knew exactly what was going on. So that was very funny. What were your main school activities here in St. John's? I don't know. I think I did everything. We founded OAS when I was in 11th grade. And it's much like what you all know as the model UN. It's the same thing, but for the Organization of American States. So when we were in uh, my junior year, we noticed that there was a group in Washington, D.C. that had OAS, and there was no participation of Puerto Rico schools. So Mrs. Valderas was our advisor, and she's the one that prompted us to do this. We applied to see if St. John's would qualify to be honored because only 30 schools can be in it because only 30 countries are in the OAS. And I believe that it still goes on. I did every single sport there was. Sports was not like you guys have it today. We only had uh, softball, volleyball, and basketball. But we did not have a junior varsity team. So my friend Anita and I were the young girls who were always in the senior teams. Clearly, we never played until we got to high school. But we were still participating in everything. We had something really fun, which was we had a talent show. Every year, the students put together a talent show or a gong show, which is like if the students didn't like it, they were able to like gong you out. Those were really fun events to have. As a student, how was the overall environment here in St. John's? The first thing that comes to mind is fun. We were happy children, and that is what I noticed when I first picked you, Carlos Juan, and Mariano up from school, in, both in kindergarten. I noticed your happy faces, and that's what I remember St. John's to be for me, a happy place. But I have to say, and my, mo- my mom also said this about her experience, and I, and I cannot stress it enough. It is the academic excellence that I think takes St. John's apart from any other school, and it is the reason why I think I was very happy at St. John's, because I was able to push myself academically as far as I could go, and I see it in you, Carlos Juan, and I see it in Mariano. I think that the 
teachers and the atmosphere here in St. John's is making you strive academically, which is, I think, the most important uh, quality that a, a, a preparatory school can have. It's always been a family school for me. In my class, I had two other cousins, just like you, Carlos Juan and Mariano, have so many cousins here in this school. And so school was very familiar. For example, I remember great friends who are still today so many years ago. For the years since, they're still my great friends, Carlos Poe and Ralph Christensen. Ralph Christensen, actually, I am the godmother of his beautiful daughter and his wife, my cousin, is the godmother of Mariano. So again, I think that St. John's for me was a big family. What do you believe most influenced you later as an adult? How did St. John's influence me as an adult? I think I was lucky enough to appreciate the academic excellence of the school. I took it to heart and continued going to great schools and continued studying hard. And to this day, I keep studying. Any other events that you participated in with your senior class? We were a very united class. The yearbook was done by the students. It was a group of us who took the pictures, edited everything, asked for materials, put it together. It was a comprehensive endeavor, but we did it. And we were involved in, in everything. It, it was a school of, and I think my mom mentioned it, all the students collaborated together to make the school one whole one. And I do recall it is about the teachers and, and uh, my principal, who was the best principal, who today is your headmaster, uh, Dr. Melendez. She's one of the main supporters for this project. I have a good Get story this. about her. So uh, that means a lot because you have to have that vision to be able to say, okay, let's give this project a chance. At the time, we called her Miss Guardiola, and she, I think, is the person that most influenced my path in high school, and I'll explain. I have always been a good student at St. John's, and as I said, academics was very important to me. At some point, when I was perhaps uh, 16 years old, I went through some family situations where I was a bit uh, down and sad. And I guess my grades started reflecting that. Well, it was very incredible because it wasn't necessarily one particular teacher or a student who, or even myself, who noticed. It was la doctora Melendez, Mrs. Guardiola. She noticed. And she called me one day to her office and asked me, is anything wrong? And I didn't even know that anything was wrong. So she pried and asked, and finally we got to the bottom of it. And it was her who gave me a chance to refocus and, again, uh, with very loving, uh, supportive ways that she could do, say, it's okay, Let's forget about this. Keep studying. Keep getting your grades. You'll do great. And I followed her advice. So it's very sad for me that uh, La Doctora Melendez has chosen to retire next year because I think we're going to lose uh, such a great uh, supporter and a great human being here in our school. Given that your kids can attend any other school, what are the reasons you chose SJS over other alternatives? As a parent, you want the best for your children, right? So when um, Carlos Juan was going to what preschools he was going, his father and I visited every school here and went to all the orientations. And I, on purpose, left St. John's last because I wanted the best for my son. I was not going to subscribe myself to any particular school, even though I went to St. John's, right? So we visit every school, and when... I remember the day that uh, his father and I went to the, came to the orientation at St. John's and I looked at the classrooms and I looked at the atmosphere. I knew and I said, we are home. And that's how I knew that my kids were going to come to St. John's as well. A happy place. I would love to get a family photo. If that's I possible. see. Yes, si la puedes coger de mi, de mi, de mi.
Okay, great. <laughs> Carlos Juan Ortiz, class of 2018. Mariana Ortiz, class of 2020. Marimar Perez Riera, class of 1985.